everybody. Josh RV Nerd from Bish's RV here in my Coldwater, Michigan home store today with some updates on the J Feather 166. This is the very first J Feather micro model, and I feel is still actually the very best out there. It's a little bit uh, wider, it's a little bit heavier than a lot of other brands that make a floor plan like this, like say the Geo Pro 19 FBS. That's certainly you know what this one took its inspiration from, but they didn't just do a copy and paste, they they did their own thing with it. Like it's a little bit wider, it has taller sidewalls and it has so much more cabinetry than almost anyone else I've seen make a floor plan like this one. As a result, yeah, it runs a few bucks more and it runs a few pounds more, but you can actually pack stuff in and spend an extended weekend uh, on one of these without needing to bring like two cups and wash them every time you use them, you know. Uh, you've got the Goodyear uh, Wrangler tire package on this. You've also got an enclosed underbelly. Uh, tank heaters are available on these. They've done a very good job of giving us some very respectable holding tank capacities. Considering the smaller size of this RV, frankly, I think their J Feather Micros have better holding tank ratings than a lot of their other travel trailers in their lineups that are much, much bigger. Um, these are double Asdell walls. Uh, J Feather Micro always has been. It's kind of where Jayco cut their teeth using Asdell in the walls for the most part. Um, they've changed up the ladder situation on this one a little bit. I'm kind of curious to know what you think about that. They went with a telescopic kind of ladder, but they actually gave it a place to mount and store on the RV so you don't have to like haul the thing inside and outside and, and waste a bunch of cargo space. Um, there's good features. There's things I think you're not going to like. Like, I don't know, I, I can say for a fact, I think not everyone's going to like the way the front bed situation on this one measures out. And it's that kind of good, bad, ugly, and everything in, in between information we're gonna give you as we go here today. And that sunshine's finally coming out. That feels fantastic. Just in time for me to step inside and get out of the sun. So since their inception, uh, this model has really kind of seen small, smart little changes every year. And it's, and it's really, it's what Jayco used to call livability factors. That, it almost reminds me, you know, Jayco's slogan used to be the most livable campers, which seemed kind of like a silly phrase until you really got into them and saw what I was talking about. And sometimes the updates aren't so obvious. Like this year, they have a new standard larger air conditioner than they did before. And also notice little details like this. Jay Feather does this a lot. In their main cabins, they include one of those big XL uh, vent fans up there to really help pull air through. Now on an RV like this, which you may uh, do some, I'll call it light duty boondocking, what I call, uh, you know, maybe off pavement camping, not like true super off road extreme barbed wire kind of camping or anything like that. But just like, you know, maybe in a, a grassy field or something of that nature. That's where this model can come into place right here. Um, that big vent fan getting some airflow rolling through so you don't have to run a generator to run the air the whole time. That could be pretty darn welcome. Now let's get some bad news out of the way. Let's talk about the bed. It's 80 inches long. Yes! It's 54 inches wide. Hmm. Not, not a true queen. It's, it, it's somewhere between a full and a queen, because it's like a queen length and a full width. It's, 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 it's weird on the spectrum kind of thing. Now, these are seven and a half foot wide, so that allows them to have the, the full length bed, at least, while still maintaining this handy headboard over here. You see, you got the little pop-up power tower. You can slide that sucker out of the way. And one of the newer updates is that those are now wireless phone chargers. But the funny thing is, they're not 12-volt powered. You still have to have like part power or uh, an inverter added to the RV. And one of the things that Jay Feather um, does and has kind of done for a couple seasons, but has not done a good job documenting and sharing with the public, is they do have some very basic inverter prep in these. Now, uh, sitting on the sofa, depending on where you're at, you may have an okay, ooh, of course I gotta get my fat back side up, uh, or a very good view of the entertainment center. It just kind of depends on where you're sitting. And like a lot of brands, now Feather's kind of always done this, but that is a 12-volt a TV and soundbar kind of combo jabo right there. You got the little outdoor mini fridge behind these panels. Um, I suppose if somebody wanted to DIY kind of knock out one of those panels, uh, do a, do a uh, Mike Tyson punch out style right there. Oh man, that game takes me back. That game takes me back. Do you know why, by the way, a little trivia. Do you know why it was called Mike Tyson's punch out? Because originally the game was just called punch out. And the final person that you had to battle was Mr. Dream. 
not Mike Tyson. They revised that game and they issued a second version of it that went super, super viral because obviously Iron Mike was just uh, a borderline you know, murderer with boxing gloves in his heyday throwing his haymakers. Uh, anyway, I don't think Mike threw haymakers. He threw uppercuts from his feet and knocked people's teeth out. Anyway, you get the idea. Now, decors, you do have a choice of two. Today, we're looking at the uh, the kind of sandy taupe-colored vintage decor. You can also get the farmhouse decor in this. Anything that's that sandy taupe color would lighten and brighten up. All of the darker wood tones we're looking at, like over here um, by the sofa, that stuff will always be the same. And interestingly, the bathroom will always be farmhouse. So you're actually going to get kind of a, a little different look at that. Now, in a small box like this, there have been some criticisms saying too many colors, too much movement, and too small of a space. I can respect that to each their own, certainly. some Obviously, with the popularity of these, though, uh, enough people seem to think it's a, a, a very, very cool thing. Now, let's start looking at some storage. Starting over here with that 12-volt DC compressor fridge. There is a gas electric two-way swap down, by the way. You'll go from 8-plus cubic foot to uh, about 6 cubic foot of cold storage. But on propane mode, it's certainly more power effective. There's also this really cool hidden closet up behind that television. Uh, you just you can pop that shelf out of there. So you have a plazatainment center. Pantry, closet, entertainment center, one, two, three, wombo combo. Obviously, we've got that uh, privacy shade for the bed there, which is nice in case you see uh, the, the sofas in use as a sleeper. But one of the things that I love that changed from the generation one of these right here is the fact that uh, instead of drawers under the bed, like they had originally done, if you look back at my first video coverage of this, they have those um, floating storage cubes. Now, those things offer some great storage. You could also totally take the cubes out of there and have an awesome space for like a dog bed or a cat litter box. Um, you could also use those as uh, footrests uh, to kind of create what I would refer to as simulated cinema seating over here by the sofa. You could also, uh, now it's not included. You might have noticed that little swing out armrest table. This RV does not include a table for Dynofa mode, but those things are easy. If you wanted to get a table and then you could use those two cubes to sit on the other side of it, on a rainy day, you could sit and entertain more than just two people in this RV. So it's a model that can have multiple different uses, multiple different purposes. I think it could be a great solo camper. It could be like just a, a me and the cat or me and the dog kind of camper. And it's something that could work well as a couple's camper. Although, again, with the narrow bed sleeping space, depending on what third world country you find yourself in, you may be legally married in the morning if you weren't already. Now, I really like to focus on both the good points and as well as points of concern or potential deal breakers, just hard deal breakers for some folks. That bed, probably a hard deal breaker for some people. I expect to see that in the comment section. This bathroom, probably a hard deal breaker for some folks, but I'm not going to conveniently overlook and not talk about the fact that the toilet space can be a little bit tight, but this is a narrow body camper. That is a radius shower. Notice that they went with a shower curtain instead of a hard shower enclosure though, so that you can maintain a little bit more elbow room both on the toilet as well as here in the shower. Now, as you're seeing, I definitely have to have my head up in the bubble, double toil in trouble of this one. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in trouble because this is a six and a half foot uh, sidewall height. But thankfully, the skylight is perfectly positioned that you saw me doing the uh, the Jane Fonda neck stretches right there. I never managed to knock my noggin on anything. And again, remember the bathroom will always be this farmhouse decor, no matter what the rest of the RV uh, looks like. And speaking of looks like, perfect little segue to see what it looks like in travel mode. And the traveling access on this model is just absolutely fantastic. Like, I, I don't even know that it this layout necessarily even needs a slide. The slide just really does uh, wonders toward opening up the space uh, if you are stuck inside on a rainy day. Now, my backside was hanging out the entry door just a second ago there. You saw that you could walk straight up past the slide to get to the bed. You can get over to the bathroom. Right next to the entry door, you have the kitchen. This one is completely Cracker Barrel compliant and totally turtle friendly, dude. The big question a lot of times though, what's it gonna take to tow this thing around? This one has a maximum weight with full cargo of just over about 5,000 pounds. Uh, or just about or just under, it's around 5,000 pounds. Anyway, what that basically means in English 
is that a tow package midsize pickup or a good tow package SUV should be able to handle this one pretty readily. Even a weaker half ton, one made for like miles per gallon requirements, should be able to, to jerk this thing around pretty darn comfortably. Even one of the half tons that's made more for like the cafe requirements, basically mile, miles per gallon requirements. Now I did a thing over here. I purposely shoved the outer seal kind of tucked it back in out of the way because that makes it easier to see the fact that you actually do have a double wiper seal going on here and it looks like they maybe stole a little bit of a note from um, the, the coachman division and they're using those T-shaped wiper seals which really grab that slide wall better. Not to mention the fact on the inside and outside you of course have that bulb seal. For the 23 season a couple of cool updates right here. Well, uh, no pun intended because we're talking about a water heater. <laughs> but a tankless on-demand water heater. So basically you just, you know, as long as you got propane, you got some 12 volt power, you got hot water. They've also gone with the quick drop stabilizers, which basically have, if you're familiar with strong arm stabilizer jack legs, um, it basically has those effectively built in. Now again, they have some very respectable holding tank capacities given the smaller size of this RV. And uh, you can get these outfitted with holding tank heaters. And you may notice we've got a nice full pass through here. If I'm being picky, I would like it if that little battery disconnect was mounted up higher. And you might notice all this little wiring diagram stuff. That's because basically behind that wall panel is where they have some basic inverter prep. They've had that for a while. They just, it's like been one of the best kept secrets in the RV industry. It's like they haven't wanted to tell anybody about it. You might be wondering though, what is all that stuff over there? Well, we'll get to all that in just a minute. First, let's take a look at the rest of the pass-through here. You might notice some handy uh, power outlets right outside available for you. And the, the couple light switches there, uh, one will activate some lighting inside and the other will actilate, uh, act, actilate, 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 whatever. Some lighting outside of the RV, you know what I meant. We are prepped and ready for rear and side view cameras. And of course, like all Jayco towable RVs, this has their turn signal safety system, J Smart Lighting. Basically, if you flip on your right hand blinker, normally only the rear tail lights on most RVs blink. But on Jayco's, all the lights down that side of the RV will blink, including that side marker. Now, if you're wondering, uh, okay, what about if I do add a camera? Does that mean the camera power blinks in and out since they feed off the power of the marker lights? And no, Jayco ran two separate power lines for them. You've also got the handy little brush guards down here, a uh, little kind of simulated, uh, they, they uh, you know, con trying, to, trying to connect the dots of off-road camping. I don't consider this a true off-road camper. At best, I would call this a very light duty off pavement camper, but that's that's really what this is. This is for the most part, you know, pretty conventional in its applications and uses. All the stuff we saw in the past here, we're looking at over there sticking off the side of the RV. That is the handy little griddle station that comes with this. And notice how it sticks way off the camper so you don't gotta worry about melting your sidewall. Although frankly, a lot of people worry about that. It's, it's, it's a non-issue. RV cookers on the outside, don't produce enough heat to do that. You've also, of course, got dad's medicine cabinet out here. And if you do add an inverter, the outlet that powers this would be one of the outlets that would also uh, be lit up, basically. Um, over here under the awning, we have a removable outside TV mount. And by the way, I'm sorry, in case you're curious, yes, there is a gas grill quick connect to feed that uh, griddle right over there. Uh, I, I forget sometimes, you know what, I tell people don't make assumptions in the RV industry, always ask questions and hey, you know what, I, I don't blame somebody for, you know, don't feel like you're asking a dumb question in the comment section. Uh, if, if somebody gives you flack, just ignore them, hit them with the band hammer and, and be done with it. I'll be along shortly to help answer your question for you. We're a little bit close to the camper next to me, so I thought I would uh, cut the film, jump back here rather than do like a swoop maneuver and give everybody motion sickness. Now, if you remember previously, these had this like rectangular tubular kind of, not, not like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tubular, but they had a, uh, uh, a ladder built right onto the back of this. It could actually detach and be mounted on the side. And you don't see that anymore. Obviously you do see a ladder mounted on the, uh, the side of the RV there. Don't get ahead of me, we'll get there in just a second. This is where that ladder stores though, when you're going down the road. So it is kind of cool that they did give us a, pl well, first of all, a factory supplied ladder. And secondly, they actually gave us a place to store that thing out of the way, which is, I don't know. I think that's kind of really awful cool and nice. Sometimes I feel like I, I wish that spare tire was lower, but then it would potentially interfere with the taillights, and I realize that that would not be a good idea. 
One of the other nice things about this having just a little bit of like a taller wheel package, a little bit of a lift, is it keeps that sewer hook up nicely uh, up off the ground. So uh, you don't gotta worry about ripping stuff off. And speaking of which, those new quick drop stabilizers, they fold up far, far flatter than the old scissor jacks used to. So the rear tail clearance on this is now better than it ever was. And you do have a handy sewer hose caddy tube. And why, why, why don't more manufacturers put that tube right next to the sewer hookup? Doesn't that make more sense? It, I mean, it does to me, but it seems like so many manufacturers don't do that. Anyway, let's get out there to that fully walkable Magnum truss roof. And uh, you see a couple things here. You see the uh, improved 200 watt factory solar package. You also see that Thule roof rack um, system that you can get for these. And uh, there's just, there's a whole world of accessories that can, uh, that can go with that. Now, obviously it kind of straddles the air conditioner, but the, the width of the rack system really doesn't affect the cost of it. So it costs the same as one that didn't, uh, I, I suppose, uh, essentially. I know it looks weird. I know it looks goofy. I know some people aren't going to like that. I totally get it. I respect it. I understand it. But it's basically, you know, to make it fit up there, that is what they had to do. And at least they're trying to do something instead of nothing. Now, one last little parting note here. That's a small awning. But I mean... What else were they going to do? There's really not a whole lot of other room that they could possibly put a bigger one on. So along the way, I compare this to several other RVs out there. Maybe you don't know what those are. Maybe you're not familiar with the alphabet soup of the RV industry. Sometimes I forget that not everybody lives in this business like I do. So what I do to kind of help bridge the gap there, I'm going to leave you some links in the video description. One, to check for pricing and availability. Two, to take a look at some other things like, say, the Rockwood version of this, the Ember version of this. Um, if you want tandem axles and you don't want an east-west bed, I've got some perfect floor plan options for you right there as well. Say from like Rockwood and Coachman or whatever else I, I can think of and scrounge up. So, uh, you know, let me know what you think about this one. And if there's a couple other things you'd like a little bit differently, leave me a note and say, what about one that does X, Y, or Z? And maybe I can leave you some links to one that does X, Y, or Z. Or maybe A, B, and C. I don't know. And uh, until next time, we will A, B, see you later. So take care, stay safe, have fun. So stupid. And happy camping, everyone. Bye.